By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back to the Camel Trophy. We have reached the semi-finals and in the semi-finals we have our public favorite deck, the Enchantress deck, making it all the way to the top four. It's amazing. I've shown you many episodes of this deck in action. If you haven't seen those, check out the tournament playlist because there you can find all of them. And um, it's pretty nice. I'm, I'll put a link to the tournament playlist in the uh, description below, by the way. And he is playing, Peter is playing the Enchantress deck and he is playing against Kuhn. And Kuhn also, he's got a sweet deck. You know, he's got Juzam Jin times four. He's playing black and white on steroids because he's playing it with the blue power. So Ancestral Recall, Time Walk, all that shenanigans. He's added those blue cards to his white and black list. And as I said, he's got four Juzam Jins in there. It's a beautiful list as well. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always, you can also navigate through this video at your own pace. The easiest way to do this is by looking at the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on there, it'll take you straight to the match itself. I know some people enjoy first looking at the match, then looking at the decks, or maybe only check out one deck deck instead of both. So check out the description below. Use those timestamps. That's a really easy way to navigate through this video. Um, now that that's out of the way and you're fully informed, I'm going to start with the decks. And you know what? Let's start again with the Enchantress deck. Let's take a look at Peter's list. And here we see the deck of Peter. So this is for Jern Enchantress, right? Combined with mainly blue, we also see a little bit of red. And even in the sideboard, we see some white. So that's quite interesting. Let's first kind of focus on what he wants to do here. So for Jern Enchantress, two green and one to cast for an O2 beautiful creature, beautiful art. Uh, but it also has a useful ability because when you cast an enchantment, you get to draw a card, which is quite nice. So if you play, for example, your Sylvan Library, you get to draw a card. Talking about Sylvan Library, it's a card that goes together quite well with Fijuran Enchantress because it allows you to look at the top three cards, put them in order. So that means that you're going to put an enchantment on top, draw the enchantment, play the enchantment, draw another card. And the more cards you draw, of course, the better the Sylvan gets because then next turn, you probably get to see three completely new cards. Again, you're going to put those enchantments at the top and kind of create your own drawing engine. Now, this card uh, goes together quite well with another enchantment here, Dark Heart of the Wood. Dark Heart of the Wood, one green and one black, a card from the dark. If you sacrifice a forest, you gain three life. Now, this is really a control deck, right? You want to get your card draw engine going. You know, you want to draw into your burn spells. You want to start copying your Fudurian Enchantress. You want to do all these shenanigans. That means you need time. Life gain equals time, right? So if Peter can find his Dark Heart of the Wood quite early in the game in combination with an Enchantress, he can start sacking forests, drawing cards, gain some life, you know. And I think then he's in a good position. If he cannot, you know, then it's going to get difficult for him. What I also like in this deck is that he is playing Channel Fireball. But what he can also do is he can use his channel to just gain a lot of, just hurt himself basically, lose a lot of life. Why would you want to do that? Because he's also playing Mirror Universe. So let's say he's in a situation where he's got a Brain Geyser and a channel. He could kind of draw a lot of cards, hurt himself a lot, and then next turn use his Mirror Universe and change life totals. Like that would be an ideal scenario for him. That would be really funny if you could pull that off. Um, and then in the sideboard, which is quite interesting, he is playing with some white card so he's playing circle of protection red which of course is a problem for him like this deck if it has to deal with an earthquake that's going to be disastrous and of course an aggressive red deck like a lot of burn that's going to be quite hard for Peter to uh, to handle with he really wants to go that control route so I get it that he put a circle of protection red there and also a circle of protection black against uh, I guess against the uh, the aggro black decks as well and because you've got access to city of brass and you've got access to four birds of paradise there could be a scenario where you're able to kind of, you know, get white mana and play these cards because they only have white, one white in their casting cost anyway. So, you know, overall, I think Peter's deck is um, it's really funny. It's looking good. It's looking okay. And uh, I, I always look forward to seeing Enchantress because you don't see it that often. Okay, enough about Peter's list. Now let's take a look at the list of his opponent, Kuhn, and his Juzam Jins. And here we see the deck of Kuhn. Now I've called it Juzam Dreams because it's got four Juzam Jins, the 5-5 five, five Arabian Nights powerhouse. I so love that art. It's so iconic. It's great to see it here in the semifinals. 
and he's playing with Underworld Dreams, the enchantment for three black. And when your opponent draws a card, your opponent takes a damage. And I mean, the cool thing is there used to be a time when people only played with Underworld Dreams if they built their whole deck around it. Now that has really changed. People are now seeing that, wait a minute, it's like a one-sided copper tablet with the upside that if I get to force my opponent to draw cards or if my opponent is playing with blue, like blue power and wants to draw cards with Brain Geyser or Ancestral Recall, having Underworld Dreams against you is really a pain. And as a blue player, well, someone who enjoys playing blue a lot, I can tell you it's a pain to see this card. If, if I always try to counter it, and if I can't, I know it's going to be hard to win a game with Timmy Spellbook. Um, but people are now seeing like, okay, Underworld Dreams is really good on its own as well. I don't have to build a whole deck around it. And the nice thing in this build is you may think, isn't three black a, bit, a little bit steep if you're playing with three colors? You would think so. But if we look at the other colors in the deck of Kuhn, they're really the second and the third color, it's quite clear. Like if we look at white, we see four swords, four disenchants and a balance. So all those control cards, the big thing that they have in common is that they solve problems and they only have one white in their casting cost. So Kuhn can just, you know, get the white mana through his mocks, through his, you know, dual lands, through his city of brasses. So he doesn't really have to change anything about his mana base, right? And then we're looking at the blue cards. He's only playing with the power cards and brain geyser. Brain geyser, Maybe it's a little bit tough because it does have two blue, but it's, of course, so incredibly good. Also with Underworld Dreams, but just as a card alone, it's just really, really good. So I understand why Kuhn has chosen to play with it. But um, yeah, I'm curious. Maybe, Kuhn, you can let me know in the comments. Does it happen often that you don't have to double blue? I mean, you do have, of course, a Black Lotus that can produce blue. You've got the Mock Sapphire and you've got the Four City of Brasses and you've got Four Underground Sea. So now that I'm kind of summing all of that up, I guess... You can make two blue with this deck, but just let me know. I'm just curious uh, if you want to share, I, I would appreciate it. Um, if we're looking at the deck, the beef is really in the black cards, right? Look at those beautiful black creatures. We've got Hypnotic Spectre. If that hits the board, you've got a problem. We've got Juzam Jin. If that hits the board, you've got a problem. We've got Sengir Vampire. If that hits the board, you've got a problem. So all these creatures or a problem for the opponent, especially, I guess, if not Spectre and the Juzam, because Juzam has five power, so in four turns, it could all be over. Um, the reason that I'm mentioning this is that he is playing with accelerators in the form of Dark Rituals, right? So he can make the tempo play. He could go turn one Dark Ritual, if not Spectre, your opponent has to solve it. Turn two, he could go Dark Ritual, Juzam, your opponent has to solve it. So th the black creatures in this deck are really creating problems, especially if you can like play them out really quickly, and I think it's going to be really tough for Pater to kind of have all the answers at the right time. You know, remember, he's not playing with swords. Uh, his deck is more controlling. On the other hand, we have seen the Fijurian Enchanters deck win over and over and over again. And now it's in the semifinals. So if it can make it to the semifinals, it can also make it to the finals. So it, it can beat this deck. But in all fairness, I do think Kuhn is really the favorite here. This is looking like a super strong, efficient deck. On the other hand, if Peter can find Mirror Universe, can do another Channel Fireball, he's done so many at this tournament, he's going to win, right? You know, so it's definitely not a given. This is, could be a very, very exciting match. And remember, the winner is going to go to the finals of the Camel Trophy. Okay, enough has been said. We looked at the deck of Kuhn. We looked at the deck of Peter. That means we are ready. Let's go to the semifinals of the Camel Trophy 2023. Game number one, here we go. Look at that Kuhn on the right with the Juzam Jin deck taking a mulligan here, putting a card on the bottom. So he's starting with six instead of seven. On the left, we have Peter with his Fujuran Enchanters deck. This is the semifinals of the Camel Trophy. Starting here with a Mishra's Factory and a pass. Tropical Island into Birds of Paradise. This is great for Peter. Let's see if Kuhn can find a land and put some pressure on. There's a swamp. Are we going to see a Dark Ritual into perhaps a Juzam turn two? He is thinking about it. Tapping, tapping. Okay, just uh, animating and attacking for two, putting Peter on 18 and passing the turn. There's another Tropical Island. Are we going to see a Fijuran Enchantress here turn two? Another Birds of Paradise. And playing here a Demonic Tutor, but that Birds of Paradise has Summoning Sickness. So I'm not quite sure why he's tapping the birds here. And interestingly enough, nobody sees it. He is passing the turn, so it has no real effect. But, I mean, if he now plays, for example, Ancestral Recall on end step, that would have an effect. 
because that Birds of Paradise had summoning sickness. Anyway, there's a dark ritual tapping. What do we see? There's a Juzam Jin. Beautiful sign copy passing to turn here. Five five. Ooh, there's a maze of if. That is unfortunate, but remember, Kun is playing with four sinkholes for a reason. I think if you play cards like, oh, look at that. There we see a Wheel of Fortune. And he's losing the Hypnotic Spectre, Chaos Orb, Balance, and a Disenchant there. And uh, we see a Brain Geyser being tossed away here by Peter. Interesting. He could have chosen to kind of continue ramping up and maybe play a Brain Geyser, but chose to get seven new cards. There's a Mock Sapphire. And there's a pass turn. And now Kuhn takes the damage, right? He's going to go to 19 because of the Juzam. Let's see what else he can do. Of course, he's got seven new cards as well. I mean, this is a pretty risky play by Peter. I wonder for Kuhn if there's a sinkhole in there. He could sinkhole the maze and attack with his 5-5. Five five. Now, there is a little bit of counter magic also in the deck of Peter, so that's something that Kuhn perhaps wants to play around. Looks like he's going to animate the factory. No, he's not. Dark Ritual. Are we going to see another big creature here hitting the board? So, three black in the mana pool. Sinkhole. One black in the mana pool. No counter magic. Tapping three. Are we going to see Hypnotic Spectre? Wow. And this is what the deck of Kuhn is good at, really putting a lot of pressure on the opponent. And the players are kind of discussing the mana and that Dark Ritual gives him enough mana to do it. So he casts a Dark Ritual for three black, uses two black for a sinkhole, then he has one black floating, uses the duel to then also cast, and of course the mana from the factory to cast if not expect her. Attacking here with the 5-5, five five. Peter dropping to 18 here. He's under a lot of pressure. A mace would be quite nice for him. And this is not the magic that Peter wants to play. His deck is way more controlling. He wants to take it easy, but he cannot because of the pressure here. And even a Dark Heart of the Wood is not going to do much, because remember, then you've got to start sacking your force just to stay alive. Tapping four. I'm tapping again. Tapping four here. What does he have for four? There's a clone. Cloning the Juzam. And then, of course, he can jump block the Hypnotic Specter. And Kuhn here taking a damage from his Juzam. And I wonder if he's going to offer the trade here to Peter. There's an underground C. Tapping. Are we going to see? There's a Swords to Plowshares, though. Does mean 5 life, but those 5 life are going to go really, really fast. Animating the factory, swinging in for 9. Chumping the hippie, taking seven, going to drop to 11 here. Oh, it's not looking good for Peter. And I mean, the deck of Kuhn is looking so strong. There's so much pressure. And with those white cards, it's so efficient. Okay, there we see a fast bond. So at least Kuhn is drawing a card here. Or I'm sorry, Peter, from his own Enchantress. What can he do? Passing the turn, unfortunately. Another damage for Kuhn, going to drop to 17, but that doesn't matter much. He's probably going to animate and attack for 9 again. Perhaps first play a land. There's another factory. He can use that to pump his other factory, dealing even more damage. This is really, really bad news. He's probably going to chump the hippie here, take 7 or 8 potentially if he ooh, only lands there in the hand of Peter, it seems. That is very unfortunate. Going to lose the bayou. He's going to take damage from the Hypnotic Spectre and the factory that's been pumped up is made into a 3 3. So take 5. Going to drop to 6 here. There's a Soul Ring in the pass. There's a Tropical Island. And a pass. Oh, it seems like it's going to be the end of, uh, of the line. For Peter here in game number one. Remember, it's just the first game. So after this, both players are going to dive into their sideboards. There's an animate. Oh, look at this. So much pressure. 
And that's it. Oh, there was a control magic coming. That would have been sweet. That could have kind of maybe saved him a little, but not really. But it would have been a good card. But um, yeah, this game one was over very, very quickly. So both players are going to dive into their sideboards. And we're going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's now Peter on the play after losing that first game. And hopefully that gives him enough advantage here to win the second game. Starting with a Birds of Paradise, Kuhn, an underground sea passing. And I'm saying that, by the way, because I love these matches to go up to three games. But we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, the deck of Kuhn is looking so strong. I do like the soaring here. Oh, look at that, a gloom from the sideboard. That is really nice. That will properly tax those swords to plowshares and disenchants. There's a scrubland. Tapping two. Are we going to see a sinkhole? There's a sinkhole on the only land of Peter. Oh, I hope he doesn't get mana screwed here in the semifinals. At least there's another birds. And remember, he doesn't have enough mana. Kun, that is, to play out of swords because of that gloom. He's got to pay an extra three for each white spell. But I mean, the mana base of Peter is not looking grand. There's a Mishra's Factory in the pass. Okay, there's a land from the top. This is good. Can we find, for example, a Sylvan? That would be quite nice. What would be ideal right now is to use all the mana, tap out, play for Jun Enchantress, and then uh, a Sylvan Library. That would be just great. Looks like he does have some options. Tapping three. Okay, there's a COP Black. There's a Sylvan. And I mean, there's some really good cards here coming in from the sideboard for Peter. I mean, Gloom, COP Black. These are just great cards. Passing the turn here to Kuhn. An underground sea. Gonna animate attack for two with the factory. Because of that COP black, maybe he's hesitant to play out a Juzam. I can imagine that, because normally, you know, when Kuhn has four mana, he's gonna play out a big black creature. Gonna tap two a sinkhole, so really attacking the mana base. <laughs> And now Peter can look at the top three cards. Exactly, he has to untap first, but he's really eager to check out what he has. There's again a Wheel of Fortune. And I have to say, Peter, I like the way you're just playing these wheels. You're like, you know what? If I, if I don't have it in my hand, whatever, I'm just going to wheel. And actually, wheel is quite good with Sylvan. Uh, because that means that next turn you can look at three brand new cards. And uh, of course, he can start now. Still has the Birds of Paradise open. He hasn't played a land yet. There we go. There's the forest. There's a mox. Are we going to see a Vajuran Enchantress? No, we're going to see a Dark Heart of the Wood. The enchantment from the dark. You can sack a forest to gain three life. It's been super good for Peter in the uh, quarterfinals. But at the moment, it's not looking that impactful with only one forest on the board. Let's see what Kun can do. Maybe he's found even more sinkholes. And remember, if he can drop a land, then he's got enough mana to start playing out his Swords to Plowshares. The next turn, if he's got enough uh, mana to start playing out his Disenchant, if he then has a land drop as well. There we see another factory. Okay, there's a Mox Sapphire, so now he already has enough mana to play out a Disenchant. And a Swords, of course. So, I mean, if he has a Disenchant, he could Disenchant the COP Black and the next turn start playing out his Scary Black Creatures, for example. He is a little bit in the tank. Another line of play could be to maybe go for the Sylvan. To not give him that card advantage and then swing in. Perhaps, oh, you don't have enough mana to also animate your factories. But that could be something you could do next turn. Or just swing in for four here. Put him on 14. So he's got some options. And of course, it all depends on what's in his hand, isn't it? We don't even know if he has a disenchant. Another line of play could be if he has a Juzam to first play out the Juzam next turn play the Disenchant. He is looking at his mana base. Remember, Disenchant, of course, is an instant. So again, another line of play could be to just wait past the turn on the end step of Peter, play a Disenchant. That is a little risky, though, because Peter does play with Power Sync. So if you let him untap again, but he is really in the tank here. Better than being beaten in the face. Sure. I think, uh, I'm just by 
There he goes. He's going to animate, swinging for four. Really wants to put the pressure on. Going to put him on. Oh, no, he's not. Interesting. He's going to pump. Going to deal three points. Of course, because that factory had summoning sickness. And then he's going to play a time walk. That is really nice for him. So he's put uh, Peter on 15. Could swing in again for four. Put him on 11. That's exactly what he does. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to win it with factory power alone. There's the land drop for turn. Tapping three. Are we going to see Hypnotic Spectre here hitting the board? There's the Hypnotic Spectre. Not too scary for Peter because of that COP black. But remember, Kuhn is playing with four disenchant. So if he can find a disenchant, take care of the COP black, it's a problem for Peter. Peter finding another forest in the form of a bayou. Tapping two here. He, he of course has a full hand as well. There is a dance of many. I got to laugh a little because the dance of many is now going to copy the hypnotic specter. Makes sense. But Dance of Many is so much better, of course, if you already have a Fijorni Chantress in play. And it looks like they're discussing a few things. So with Dance of Many, it's an enchantment from the dark. When it comes into play, it creates a token. That token is a copy of target creature. If Dance of Many leaves the game or the token leaves the game, both, of, both cards are destroyed. So that makes your token... Very vulnerable because you can kill it with a disenchant or with the swords. And of course, you also have to pay two blue during your upkeep. But the big advantage, of course, of the Dance of Many is it's only two blue to cast. So I know that I've seen um, Leo uh, play it in his robots deck recently, copying his Triskelions with Dance of Many because it's just so cheap. It's as cheap as a copy artifact. Let's see what Kuhn can do here. If he has a disenchant... That would be huge. Looks like he's just going to animate the factories though, swinging with everything he has. He could of course consider only to swing in with one factory and then pump it to a 3-3. Three, three. Or he could just attack with everything, offering Peter a traitor, Hypnotic Spectre for Hypnotic Spectre, or a factory for Hypnotic Spectre. Looking at the mana base, tapping four, taking a damage then, no. Not quite clear what he's doing. Okay, he's playing a disenchant. Playing a disenchant on the Dance of Many. He really wants to keep the pressure on. Gonna take a damage to animate a factory. Attack with the factory, pump it to three with the other factory. Also attacking with the Hypnotic Spectre. Obviously, the Hypnotic Spectre, he can uh, prevent the damage easily with the uh, COP Black. So taking three damage from the factory. I mean, he is already on eight. And yes, he's got the Dark Heart of the Wood, but he only has two forests. Now he can look at the top three cards. And I really like this aggressive game by Kuhn because it's really good against a control deck. And also it's really good against a player with Sylvan. Right, because with Sylvan you can draw extra cards, but it's going to cost you four life. If you can then put pressure on him, he's probably not going to do it. And here we see another Dance of Many by Peter, probably copying the Hypnotic Spectre again. And let's see if Kuhn has some removal again. And if he has removal, is he going to use it on the Dance of Many? It looks like he's got some options. Putting his cards down though. Is he just going to attack with the factory? Animating the factory. Attacking just with the factory. That makes sense. Remember he can pump it to a 3-3. Three, three, so, so Peter's going to take the damage. Drop to 5. I mean if. If Kuhn can find. An Underworld Dreams. With that Sylvan. That would be brutal. That would be absolutely brutal. That could give him the win. It looks like he's got an Underworld Dreams in hand, though. I think I spotted one. I mean, he can prevent the damage with the COP Black, but that's really going to be annoying for him. Tapping four. There's a Terror and a Terror. Two Terrors. 
killing both of the birds. Okay, so he's really going for the mana base. So two terrorists on both birds of paradise, also knowing that Peter has to pay two blue during the upkeep to keep his token alive. Interesting. I wonder if he perhaps then also has a disenchant for the soul ring, if he's like gonna go full for the mana. There we see a strip mine on the side of Peter and a pass. Peter not really finding what he needs here. He's on five under a lot of pressure. Remember, this is uh, the deciding game for Peter. He's already one game down. If Kuhn can win it, he will move on to the finals. Ooh, there's another World Dreams. That is really tough for Peter, even with the COP Black. I wonder what Kuhn's gonna do. Probably just attack with one factory or maybe offer to trade factory for Hypnotic Spectre. Of course, he took care of the Birds of Paradise, so both of the birds cannot be used as chum blockers anymore. And now they are discussing the Sylvan Library. What I understand is that the Sylvan, it's a May ability, so you may look at the cards, you don't have to. But if Peter does look at the cards, he does take damage for it. That, of course, he can prevent with the COP black, but that will cost him three mana. And there we see a block, by the way, of the token on the factory and then a strip on the factory. Exactly. So he's not going to use the Sylvan because he doesn't want to take the damage. So he's dropping to four. I mean, it's looking really bad here for Peter. He's going to pass the turn. I mean, that Underworld Dreams is a bit of a problem. I do believe he can prevent the damage with the COP Black, though. And he had enough mana to do so, so that was a little bit surprising that he didn't. Or maybe I'm missing something. Let me know in the comments. I'm not always right. <laughs> I mean, I wish I was. Magic is a complicated game. Anyway, two cards in hand for Kuhn. And it's looking great for him. It looks like he's going to make it to the finals. Passing to Turney. Yeah, now he's preventing the damage. Oh, and he's got to pay extra because of the gloom. So he's got to pay four as well. So he's got to pay the extra tax from his own gloom. I forgot about that. That's going to make it really difficult for Peter. So Peter untapping here. Again, paying four to prevent the damage from the Underworld Dreams. And I think the best thing that Peter can do is stall because he also has the... Um, uh, he has the Dark Heart of the Wood, of course, to net him some life, but eventually, how can he how can he win this? On the other hand, he does have, of course, the COP Black. Peter a little bit in the tank here. Does he want to pay the four mana? The problem, of course, of his deck, his Vigerian Shandra's deck, his whole deck is built around drawing cards. So the Underworld Dreams is just a fantastic card against the deck of Peter. He's going to draw a card, taking the damage. There's a Vigerian Enchantress. Passing the turn. There's a pass. Going to pay four to prevent the damage. Going to stay on three. There's a maze of if. It's going to be harder and harder for, for Kuhn to find his way through. I think what Kuhn needs is another Underworld Dreams. That would be ideal. And I don't know what Peter needs. You know, he's got, he's got to find a way out of here. I think first point of business for him is to get rid of that Underworld Dreams. But there are not many cards in his deck that can do so. He's got, of course, Chaos Orb. That's one of the cards. Talking about Chaos Orb, there is Chaos Orb. He's probably going to flip on COP Black here. Remember, I believe Peter has another COP Black in hand. So now he's going to flip here in the semifinals. Oh, 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 the pressure, the pressure, the pressure. And beforehand, Peter's activating the COP Black to prevent potential damage if he's going to lose the... COP black. But this is, wow, this is a nail biter. There's the flip, it's a hit. Really good flip from Kuhn. Full control, COP black is gone. 
We see a Juzam in hand by Kuhn. Is he going to play out the Juzam? No, he's not. He's going to be patient, passing the turn. Another damage here taken. There's a control magic. Wow, and that's really, really a good card here for Peter. The problem, of course, is now, oh, he may draw a card with the Enchantress. I think he is going to draw a card. It's going to go to one. I mean, he's got the Dark Heart of the Wood, of course. So he can sack a force to net three life. There's a pass. Would be really cool to see a Time Twister here. Another dar another Underworld Dreams. I wouldn't say Dark Heart of the Wood, but another Underworld Dreams. In response, there's a sack of a forest here. That means he's going to lose two and he just gained three, so he's going to plus one. So he's now on two. There's the attack with the Hypnotic Spectre. And that means some damage here for Kuhn. What an interesting game too this is. Losing there the Juzam Jin. And there's a pass by Peter. So Peter kind of has it a little bit under control. I mean, he's on two, but he's got this unblockable Hypnotic Spectre. That's really tough for Kuhn to deal with. Kuhn now just needs a Disenchant or a Swords or a Demonic Tutor because I mean, that allows you to look up whatever you want. I wonder what he's going to look up. This is quite interesting. One of the lines of plays could be, I think that's probably best a Time Twister because I wonder if... Um, if uh, if Peter can survive a time twister, what he could do, of course, is then sack his four forests there. I believe all those lands there on the next to the maze of it for all four, so they can net him twelve lives. Going to go up to fourteen, but he's going to draw seven, so he's going to die. He cannot survive a time twister. There we see the time twister. Is this the end of the road, or are we going to see a counter spell? He's going to sack two, so he's going to go up to eight. It's not going to be enough, though. And he's like, oh, no, you've got two Underworld Dreams. I'm going to take two damage per card. He's going to sack two more. That's it, right? Then he's going to go up to 14, draw seven. For each card he draws, he takes two points of damage. So he's going to drop to zero. It's exactly zero. Wow, what an exciting game number two being decided by a time twister. I mean, there are not many games that get decided by a time twister, but I guess with Underworld Dreams, you do. Again, showing the power of this incredible enchantment from a Legends. So a big congratulations to Kuhn, and Kuhn is gonna play in the finals against Bjorn, who is playing with BB-8. It's a brutal robots deck. So um, come back, please, next week to enjoy the finals. And if you're not a subs subscriber yet, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Great, great, great. Now that you've done that, thank you so much. Please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are completely free and they really help the channel move forward. And if you like the content that I make, please consider becoming a Patreon on patreon.com slash timmytalks. You can also already become a supporter of the channel for just $1 a month. And for that dollar, you get access to the uh, Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll.